welcome to episode 62 of the Tea and Possibilities podcast. I'm Nikki and this is a podcast all about knitting, crochet and making all the things here in Northwest London. You can find me on Instagram at hippie underscore Nikki. I'm Nikki Hippie on Ravelry and if you search for Tea and Possibilities under the groups tab you will find our group right there. Also in the group will be a chatter thread about this particular episode, so if there's anything you want to discuss or talk about that you don't want to leave in a comment below, please do check out the chatter thread and have your say there. As always, there are quick links to everything I mention in the box below, but if you would like some juicier show notes, you can find them on my blog, which will also be linked just down there. I'd like to kick off, as I always do, with a massive thank you. Um, if you are a new viewer, thank you very much for giving the podcast a shot. There are very many out there, so I always appreciate my new viewers. And to my old viewers, I appreciate you because you come back to this nonsense episode in, episode out. Um, even when I disappear for ages, um, you're always there and I massively appreciate it. Thank you so much. Today is one of those very rare occasions when I do not have tea. Um, I have a big glass of really cold Ribena because it's about a million degrees in London today. We had the beginning of August um, was quite rainy, quite cold. At one point I got absolutely soaked to the skin when I went out to the King's Road to get some lunch and ended up sat in front of a space heater trying to dry myself off and warm back up again. And now... <sighs> it's very very warm and I will happily t drink tea day in day out but I've had to shut the windows because obviously it being a beautiful day everyone's outside playing music having fun so I'm trying to block out as much noise as possible and I just I needed a cold drink so if I end up with like a little blue half moon on my lips it's just the Ribena hypothermia is 100% not setting in right now I also have a nice big bottle of water as well, which I've almost finished, so hydration is key. Because of the heat, I'm actually not going to do too much of a long podcast today, um, purely because I haven't done a lot of knitting because of the heat, um, and it is already about five minutes into this recording. Very, very stuffy in here, and I'm getting a little bit uncomfortable, and my hair, which was sort of pretty much wet when I set up, is already basically dry so whew, it'll be it'll be a little bit of a short one um but yeah hopefully <laughs> hopefully you'll enjoy it anyway and hopefully wherever you are you have something ice cold to drink and some good knitting whew. there's going to be lots of me just going whew, and mentioning the weather and the heat specifically throughout this episode um so sorry about that ahead of time but i'm english and therefore um contractually obliged to be obsessed with the weather particularly when it's this hot also you can tell it's hot because I haven't put my watch on or my Fitbit I haven't got any rings on <sighs> just the fewer things on me the better frankly that's why I've got my schlubby Game of Thrones t-shirt on and I haven't made my usual effort <laughs> and now I'm just babbling so um let's go on with whipped up shall we <laughs> up this episode faux girl has returned i've decided that's my superhero name faux girl um i don't know if that's a very good name but it's the first one that popped ahead and that's how i feel so we're gonna run with it because today i have not one but two foes and i'm very very happy with them there is a bit of a theme to my foes this week um but before i show you my foes i will show you the bag that my current projects are living in it is this really cute little bucket bag. So it's got a like buckety base, um, which just makes me want to chant buttery biscuit base. For anyone who hasn't seen that, I will link it below and it will be stuck in your head for the rest of the week, month, potentially lifetime. So, you know, click at your own peril. But this is from Cat in the Bag and they have an Etsy shop and they are one of the lovely donors to the Summer of Socks Cal. And they sent two project bags and one was for me and one was for a prize. And this is the one I have kept and it's a beautiful denim bag. It's got a little pocket at the front here which is quite handy. Two nice little uh, carry handles. So it's actually like a miniature handbag. You can kind of take it on holiday. And um, the top is like this drawstring, traditional drawstring bag. And I just loved this fabric. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. It reminded me of um, some of the batik stuff 
that I did in textiles when I did textiles at GCSE, so I had to have it. Um, it's got a few projects living in here actually, it's got all my little projects, so just assume that pretty much everything I show you this week is in this bag. There is a little bit of a theme to my foes this week and um, I'm sure that you will be able to guess what that is. First up is a little pumpkin hat. Now, I have knit a pumpkin hat before. I knit it for um, Katie of Inside Number Three's um, little girl. I knew she was having an autumn baby and a little pumpkin hat seemed very appropriate. And this is the Harvest Bounty pattern by Vicky Bird Designs. I knit this in um, Debbie Bliss Rialto DK. The orange is called Coral and the green is Basil. I had plenty of green left over from the last couple of fruity hats that I made. I made um, a pumpkin hat, this is my second, and I also made an apple hat, which was another pattern by Vicky Bird, and I will link that below. And I had plenty of the green left over from that, so I just bought a little bit more coral. And I went for the toddler size. This is for my boss. Um, who I love very dearly, he's a lovely man, and he and his wife are having their second child in autumn, so I thought another pumpkin hat would be perfect. And I went toddler, um, just because then I think they can get a little bit more wear out of it, and I think it looks quite cute on toddlers. Um, but as you will see very shortly, what do I know about baby sizing? But I figure babies grow, you know, it's not that big, it probably wouldn't fit me. It might fit me, but at some point it will fit their child and it's the thought that counts. So yeah, I would definitely recommend that pattern. Um, it's very, very quick and easy to do. It's so simple and so straightforward. Um, you can do the leaf and the tendrils very, very quickly. I finished the whole thing, um, as in put all the pieces together on my lunch break one day. And yeah, it's very effective. So I would heartily recommend. And then I was on a bit of a fruity hat kick and I had to make another one and I decided to make it for my friend who recently had her baby. Um, it's her first baby and I'd knit them things earlier this year. So if you remember the little puddle jumper cardigan and I did um, a garter ear flap hat, various things. So I thought, well, I will do this because this is ridiculous and I had to make it. This is the pineapple hat by Sonia Marie, and again, it's in Debbie Bliss Rialto DK, which is a yarn that I really actually enjoy working with. Um, and as I say, I had the green, so I thought I would just get another ball of yellow. This is the mustard, and it is teeny, teeny tiny. I'm just gonna grab my pumpkin hat, hang on, for a size comparison. I think this is the most illustrative of what I know about children. Do they come out this big and grow to this big? I don't even know. This, I followed the pattern exactly. I didn't do a gauge swatch, I'm gonna be honest with you, because it's a hat, I never swatch for hats. Because I figure if I get far enough into it that I realize it's not gonna work, I consider that a gauge swatch. Um, I'm one of those fly by my seat of my pants people. Um, so yeah, I went this for the second size mentioned in the pattern. The first size is a preemie size. So I really don't know if this is going to fit her little one, but if not, it's quite a fun thing to pop on a shelf and she can like use it to dress up her dolls or something when she's little, um, when she's little, she's very little now, she's brand new, um, when she's a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, she may not fit into this, but I'm sure at some point she will have toys and teddies and things that will need a hat. This I thought was gonna be a hell of a lot more complicated than it was, it really wasn't at all. Um, it's a very, very simple cable. The pattern is very clear. I literally did the ribbing um, and then I did the first kind of cable repeat on my lunch break and I finished it that evening. Um, the leaves were a bit fiddly because as you can see, they're not very big and attaching them was also a bit fiddly because it's not very big. But I think that is just so effective. It does look like a pineapple. It looks like what it's meant to look like and that is all one can ask for one can ask for. I think I've been watching too much of The Crown. I've been re-watching bits of The Crown to get myself ready for the new season and clearly I have taken on the spirit of Elizabeth II. Uh, one. Next up we have my whips and I just want to say that I definitely have not cast on my bittersweet jumper again. Um, you know, 
three guesses for why. Mate, don't, whatever you do, turn this episode into any kind of drinking game. Do not drink whenever I say how hot it is because you will not make it through. This episode is probably going to be like 15, 20 minutes long and you will not, you will not survive the episode because I will be repeating how hot it is over and over and over again and will be getting progressively more glowy throughout said episode. But I haven't cast on my bittersweet, which I showed you, well, I say showed you last episode. I showed you the yarn and told you that I'd frogged it. Um, and I haven't cast it on just because it is very, very, you know, it's a DK weight wool and it's just really heavy and just knitting with it. I just, I just couldn't. And about socks and fruity little hats, it's about all I can manage at the moment. The first of my whips, um, you will not be surprised to see this. It is my um, first toe up sock. And I'll just grab it out of my bag. I'm not actually using my cat in the bag one for this. It's in its usual um, knitting goddess bag. And this is knit out of West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4 Ply. The main colour is Hollyberry, which I believe is um, a Christmas colourway from a couple of years ago. I do know that some people have managed to buy this since seeing it um, on this podcast, so it is still available as far as I'm aware. And the contrast colour is Cayenne Pepper. I am knitting this following the Hey Lou video tutorial. Um, you have no idea how many times I said that. It's ridiculous, I don't know why I couldn't get that sentence out, but that is what I'm doing. I am following a video tutorial by Hey Lou. And I have completely finished the foot and I just need to do the gusset increases and I just haven't had time to sit on my bed with the laptop and go through the video for how to do the gusset increases. It will happen, um, it's just, life is very busy at the moment, um, just grabbing my yarn before it runs away. Um, I feel like I'm always saying life is busy, but it really is. When it's this hot, it's hard to turn down drinks and um, barbecues and hanging out with friends in parks and it's hard. And when you're kind of outside socialising, it's not really the right time to whip out your video tutorial and figure out how to do gusset increases. So I um, have cast on another sock to be working on in those situations. But this is the second of my Christmas box of socks. I am copying Amy Florence absolutely shamelessly here. I am doing my very own Christmas box of socks. I can't wait till near the end of the year when I can get myself a nice themed box to keep them in. And this will be my second pair. Um, that is second pair cast on. It's very likely that a vanilla pair will get finished before this one does. Um, but I hope by the end of the year to have three pairs. So I've got Christmas Eve, Christmas Day and Boxing Day and that would be ideal. I'm going to get whatever the West Yorkshire Spinners Christmas colourway is this year and maybe be working on those over Christmas and that'll be towards next Christmas. Um, yes, I did just reference Christmas 2020. Yes, I did. So yeah, this is coming on, um, I was going to say a pace and then realised that was a complete and utter lie because it's coming on slowly. Slowly but surely. Um, and I'm still just really happy that I've managed to toe up sock, so I'll take the win. Now back to my cat in the bag project bag. Um, you really can fit a lot in here, um, but I have my vanilla sock. This is the sock that I cast on because I didn't have the brain space to be working on the toe up and as I just said didn't have the time to sit down with my um, phone or my computer and figure out the gusset increases. So I cast on a vanilla sock. This is um, another West Yorkshire Spinners, there is a bit of a theme clearly with my socks at the moment. This is Candy Cane and again it is a Christmas colourway. Um, I'm not sure from what year so I don't know if it's still available. And again I'm using a contrast heel, toe and cuff and that is Cayenne Pepper I think. This actually came with a mini skein attached so I'm not sure but it is quite similar um, to the Cayenne Pepper. I think this might be a little bit more red whereas the cayenne is a bit more orangey um but it's a red i was going to say as always i am using the um method slash pattern in the meanwhile at the castle uh videos for how to knit socks and i am doing that i'm following the way i learned from them but i don't really watch it anymore i feel really proud of myself because i can cast on and get 
pretty much entirely yeah actually now i can get all the way through a sock without having to reference those videos anymore which i'm pretty impressed by considering what this time last year i'd only just cast on my first sock i think i think it was that wasn't it i think i think it's about a year that i've been knitting socks and now i'm really comfortable doing the heel flap sometimes i have to just remind myself um of the numbers for the heel turn but yeah i really really happy to do a whole sock without referencing anything except the kitchen of stitch can anyone remember that off by heart it's really hard i'm thinking of like getting it printed and laminated and turned like a little key ring or something for my notions pouch um because that's the bit i can always have to check but yeah i'm really happy with it this will be my third christmas sock because what do you do when it's absolutely sweltering out and you are, you know, you get out of the bath or the shower and within five minutes you're like sticky and gross again. What do you do during that weather? You know, Christmas sock. Of course you do. Of course you do. Um, and I sound sarcastic there, but why not? At the end of the day, this I can work on. Trying to work on my jumper, not so much. Sticky, um, heavy, just way, way, way too much. This... This is, this is why we have the Summer of Socks cow guys, because working on a sock with nice, thin, light yarn, happy days. Perfect thing to be working on in this weather. And I think, as I've said before, I definitely want to make the Summer of Socks an annual event. And I think next year I want to knit some cotton socks, because then it would be even more perfect. I did put my sock aside to work on my fruity hats because there is a little bit of a deadline. Um, babies tend to be born um, as and when they want to be and not as and when your knitting is finished. Um, really, somebody should have a chat with babies about that because I think it's kind of rude. But unfortunately, this is where we find ourselves right now. So I wanted to make sure I had the pumpkin hat um, ready and you know, ready to hand over before my boss finishes work, um, before the baby's born. And I wanted to make sure I had the little pineapple hat ready because I am going to visit my friend uh, this coming weekend. It's currently bank holiday weekend, so I'm going next weekend uh, to meet her new little one. And I wanted to, I've already given her some knitted things at the baby shower, but I've got a couple of bits and pieces that I wanted to take just to say like, you know, Hello and welcome to the world. So I wanted to get those done and now I'm probably going to go back to just mindlessly knitting on my lovely vanilla socks because you're gonna be shocked, but it's too hot to do anything else. That is pretty much it for this week. Um, I could do a knit and natter about the fact that I went indoor skydiving yesterday, um, but I'm not going to do that. I will talk about that probably on next episode. It was really fun, I had a great time, but um, yeah, just just getting progressively more stuffy in here so i wanted to end by talking about the summer of socks cow this was a three-month cow for those of you who don't know it started on the 1st of june and is due to finish on the 31st of august the idea being as i've just said socks are perfect for this really hot weather because they're really small and they're not too like heavy going on the old hands when it's very sticky so we are rapidly approaching the end of the cowl. It'll be finishing next weekend while I'm away visiting my friend. So there won't be a podcast next week. There will be one the week after where I will be announcing the winners. I will lock the thread on the morning of the 1st of September. So that gives everybody a chance to get into the chatter thread. There is not going to be a finished object thread for this cowl because you don't have to finish to be eligible for a prize. You just have to be a member of the group and engaging in the chatter thread and I will use random number generator to pull um, a winner. So yeah, go have a look through the chatter thread, share some socks, get involved and I will be putting prizes um, at some point in the next couple of weeks and they will be announced on the next episode. So make sure to tune in. One last thing about the Summer of Socks is we have some new prizes. Ninette of A Busy Life Yarn contacted me. She is based in Colorado. And the reason I say that is because this prize arrived really, really quickly. So well done postal service on both sides of the Atlantic. Really good job. Um, but she was really kind and sent two beautiful skeins of yarn. Um, one of these is for me. And she has sent a um, 75 merino superwash, 25% nylon fingering weight. And this is called Granddaddy Tree. So this is a beautiful, beautiful sock yarn. 
I absolutely adore this. I feel like it would make a beautiful addition to my Christmas box of socks. And she also sent a DK weight um, superwash merino in roasted marshmallow. I'm going to keep this one because it's a DK weight and I feel like the sock weight should go for the prize fund for a sock cow. And also because I think this would make a really juicy cabled hat. Um, I've got that beautiful Caswell Bay hat by Fiona Alice. That fits quite snugly on my head and I really like the loose kind of bounce of the grey hat that my nan knit me. So I'm actually considering knitting um, that same pattern, um, converting it to in the round and doing it in this because I think... I think this might be a good addition to my hat wardrobe um but you know obviously we will see but this is absolutely beautiful yarn thank you so much Ninette for getting in touch and for sending this over you have chosen some really beautiful yarn and I can't wait to give this away and as I said last episode I'll be making up little prize packs so do tune in to see what the prizes are and what you could win and maybe it will be you well, there we go, chaps. We are all done for this week. I am probably going to go and put a bikini on in order to do this edit. It's potentially the only way I'm gonna be cool. Uh, just gonna get some ice cubes and just load up my bottle and just hydrate. Um, so please think of me editing away with my laptop getting very, very hot. I hope you don't mind it being a slightly shorter episode. I know that we're all very busy in the summertime, so hopefully this fits into your life a little bit easier than one of my longer episodes. And I will see you very, very soon. I will hopefully have an actual cup of tea next time. There will be more whips. There may be foes. There may be hoes. Hopefully there will be a knit and natter. But that's it for this week. I will be going to refill my lovely, no longer very cool drink. I will be topping up my water bottle and I will essentially just be finding some shade and sitting in it for a little while before I tackle editing this. Um, I will see you in September and until then have a lovely nitty couple of weeks and I'll see you very soon. Take care, bye! It's really warm and I'm really not very happy.